Chapter 25. The Show at Cafe Independent. The Cafe Independent opening night party was at full force. The B-flat tires had completed their first set. Now atop the platform, they were into their second. The whole room rocked with their sound. If anything, the band played better than during their first. Opening night jitters were gone. They were playing together smoothly, listening to the grooves and beats, talking to one another, as it were, with their music. Sometimes lug nut soloed, sometimes it was dipstick, then it was clutch. The music pulsed, the music soared, the music sang, the music danced. The mice were enjoying themselves immensely. The floor was a rippling sea of bouncing, jumping, turning, wiggling, jiggling mice. Some had their paws in the air, others kept their eyes closed and moved as though in a trance. Tails waved low, tails waved high, some mice danced alone, others danced in twos, threes, and even fours, paws touching, slapping, waving. Not everyone was dancing. Some were on the side, telling or talking, telling jokes, listening, watching, crumbs were eating, nectar and water drunk. A few even slept. Windshield was still at work on his mural, muttering under his breath, sending splotches of paint hither and th tither to his own immense satisfaction, as well as the interest and amusement of those who took the time to watch. Foglight had found a quiet corner where she worked on yet another poem. As for Ragweed, after his singing debut, which was very well received, he stood on the fringes of the crowd, watching from time to time. He made his way to the security guards. How's it going? He asked. Way cool, he heard from now, from no, from now. Hmm? Way cool, he heard from now one, oh, now another of the guards. Like, no problems, man. He examined the bolt hole upstairs and felt good about that. He also checked the basement, eyes closed, toes tapping. Bumper was sitting on the top step, dreamily listening to music. Hey, dude, keep your eyes open, Ragweed warned with some severity. I will, I will, returned the mouse. For a few moments um, after that, Ragweed had admonished him. Bumper did scrutinize the basement. All too quickly, however, he shifted his attention back to the music. Now and again, he gave in to the temptation to close his eyes. Ragweed, meanwhile, meanwhile, returned to the club upstairs and for a while remained alone off by a wall watching the band perform. In particular, he kept his eyes on Clutch. She was playing hard, head bobbing up and down, her face intense as her paws moved like summer lightning over the strings of her guitar. Her lean, tall form vibrant with intensity. Her fierceness fascinated Ragweed. At the same time, he, was, he wasn't sure he knew her very well at all. What he did know, however, is that he would like to know her better. Was that possible, he wondered, wishing he knew how she felt about him and about Blinker? Maybe, he mused. Amberville was not such a bad place after all. Maybe he should stay. Yeah, he liked the way the Amberville scene. It took a moment for him to realize... Sorry about that. It took him a moment to realize that Clutch was now looking right at him. She winked. He grinned back. Then she beckoned him toward her. Ragweed made his way through the teeming crowd to the band. What's up? He called to her. Like, how about doing another number? She shouted down to him. Sure, he replied, and ho hoisted himself up onto the uh, onto the book. He stepped forward, listening to the music, letting it seep into his head. He looked at Clutch. She looked back. He had no doubt then how fond of her he really was. Recalling the song of the train whistle on his ride to Amberville, he began to sing, using the long, low, mournful whistle sound. Been traveling long, been traveling far. Begin to wonder just where I are. Have gone to the moon, have gone to the star. Wondering where I'm at on the calendar. Cause the world can be mean or the world can be nice. It all depends on where you've been. All I know from all I've seen is uh, it'll is it'll put my hopes on the rock and rolling mice. It was all that at that moment that Blinker burst through the front, front entry of the Cafe Independent, disheveled, dirty, and exhausted. It was all he could, too, to stagger forward, open his mouth, and cry out, Clutch! Silver Size is coming! Save yourself! Then he collapsed upon the floor. The music stopped. The dance ceased. The, those nearest, the prostrate Blinker, backed away. Clutch was the first to take action. She rushed over to the white mouse, knelt down, and gathered him up in her paws. What, Blinker? What did you say? Blinker opened his eyes. I've betrayed you. It's Silversides and Graybar. They're coming to attack through the sewer system. Make sure you get away. 
I, I, I didn't know what to do. Please forgive me. I, I love you, Clutch. With those words, the white mouse fainted away. Slowly, Clutch lowered Blinker to the ground. Then she stood up on her hind, lines and look, hind legs and looked around. The cats are coming to attack us through the sewer system, she said with a terrible calmness. All you dudes, be easy, she called out. No panic. Like, we've got plenty of time to escape. Head up the stairs and to the bolt hole. Youngsters first. Then she bent down over Blinker again and nuzzled him. The mice in the room fell utterly silent. Ragweed stared at Clutch and Blinker. He did not know what to do. He felt like crying. He felt like screaming. But as he watched the million mice begin to move upstairs, he felt an urge of desperate energy. What did he care now if he lived or died? He jumped onto the platform. No, wait! He cried out to the mice. You mustn't go. Like, are you going to run all away all of your lives? Check it out, dudes. Are you going to live, going to give in to the fear again? Are you always going to think life means being on the defensive? You know what I'm saying, dudes? There are a lot of us. We way outnumber them. We can stop them. Like, this is our time. Those who are ready and willing to fight, stay behind and follow me. With that, Ragweed leaped down and rushed for the back hallway. He did not look back to see if anyone was following. In truth, he didn't really care.